you know the devil and the demons in hell have got to back up and get out of your way when you put the word on it come on somebody speak the word there's a difference in what will be and what might be and the challenge is some of you rather remain where you are than to take the risk because life really could be on the other side what do you do when love can make it right but love lets it get worse what do you do when love is the reason why you sitting in your house crying at night i came to tell satan here it is the blood of jesus is against you i i came to tell the enemy the blood of jesus the problem is there's a lot of us where God is taking residency in us. We've accepted Jesus in our lives. We have come to believe and accept the Lord. But the problem is that we have him living in us, but he's not working in us. Because if God said some stuff over your life, it makes no difference what you see. Because what he said is far more real than what you see. I came to tell you tonight, God can destroy everything around you and keep you alive. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He said, no, you're never alone. You may get lonely, but you won't be alone because he's there. Do I start or do does Larry start or you know this is all new to me? We're gonna go ahead and get started. I'll start with welcoming everyone to the very, very first live video chat with Bishop Owens and co-pastor Susie Owens, our our leaders for the Mount Calvary Holy Church of America. I'd like to welcome everyone joining us today. This is the very first time that we've had a chat like this, our pre-convocation chat. I'd like to invite you to tell your friends to log on and join us. Forward the link out, tweet the link out, post it on Facebook. And while you're doing that, make sure that you use the hashtag pound sign MCHCA2013, MCHCA2013. I want to go ahead and get started. Again, thank you all for joining us. We've got Bishop and co-pastor sitting in front of a computer, everybody, with white strings coming out of their ears. How dope is that? I'm very excited. I hope you're excited as well. Uh, so, Bishop, let's go ahead and start with you. Um, let's briefly talk about the Mount Calvary Holy Church of America. What is the Mount Calvary Holy Church of America? Well, the Mount Calvary Holy Church is a holy Pentecostal organization that was founded on godly principles of sanctification and the Holy Ghost, the baptism in the Holy Ghost. And Mount Calvary Holy Church this year is 84 years old, and we are excited because this is our pre-anniversary Next year will be a great celebration because we'll be 85 years old. So this year is exciting because it's our pre-anniversary convocation. It was, founded by, it was founded by Bishop Rolfield Johnson in 1929, and Mount Calvary has come out of the United Holy Church. So we are part of that organization, but God has set us apart and established us with a 21st century cutting edge ministry for the kingdom in this day. Absolutely, which is why we are right here hanging out on the internet tonight. You mentioned Bishop Broomfield Johnson. D discuss a little bit of the history of the, the Mount Calvary Holy Church as it relates to the Black Pentecostal Church. Well, we were one of the first Holiness Pentecostal churches established in 1929. Bishop Broomfield Johnson was a son of the United Holy Church, and he came out of that church to give women and to give young people an opportunity to be prominent in ministry. That was the founding principle. Bishop Broomfield Johnson was the, the um, presiding bishop, and his successor, Bishop Harold Ivory Williams, succeeded him as such, and now I am the presiding bishop. So in the 84-year history, We've only had three presiding bishops. And when our founder went on to be with the Lord in 1972, the church did not split. And he uh, chose Bishop Earl Williams as his successor. And Bishop Williams served the church for 37 years. 
And this is going on my fifth year, and I'm excited about being the presiding prelate. It's it's a it's been a wonderful five years, Bishop. I remember when you first were appointed as the to the presiding prelate. And I want to just by way of information, everybody, whenever you see that word P R E L A T E, it's pre really pronounced prelate, not prelate, right, Bishop? Yeah, it, it is prelate. Thank you very much. Yes, it's always prelate. So don't say it's one of those little pet peeves I have. It's prelate, yeah. not prelate. Bishop Bishop is not a prelate. You also mentioned, Bishop, that the church was also started to give women an opportunity. Speaking of women, we've got one of the giants in Christendom, as folks like to say, co-pastor Susie Owens. How are you this evening? I'm doing great. I'm doing absolutely great. Excellent, excellent. Let's talk a little bit about women in ministry as it relates to the Mount Calvary Holy Church of America. What does that mean to you as the International First Lady? Well, the Mount Calvary Holy Church of America organization has always been women-friendly. And so we've always enjoyed the privilege of serving not only as pastors or evangelists, ministers or elders, but we also enjoyed the privilege of serving as bishops. So we do have some female bishops in our organization. Uh, some of them have gone on to be with the Lord, but we do have uh, female bishops that we recognize and that we honor. So we've always had good, good, good relationship as it relates to women. And our organization has always been uh, very favorable toward women and, and their success, especially as it relates to leadership. So I like to think of our, of our organization as the kind of organization that women can become a part of and then flourish and grow. Absolutely. Look, looking ahead, looking ahead, July 23rd through July 26th is our 84th annual International Holy Convocation. Let's, before we talk about the lineup for convocation and talk about all of the, the, the wonderful people coming to celebrate with us, let's briefly talk about what an actual convocation is. You know, I'm a member of the local church at Greater Mount Calvary Holy Church where, where I came there as a student at Howard University. And I remember you, you all on stage saying, we're the church in the hood that will do you good. I grew up in a very refined church in a very uh, and, and, and when I say refined, I mean in the sense of you know we didn't we didn't praise like we praise at Calvary. I grew up in a church of people you know pat, dab their face when they felt a little high spirited in church. Uh, describe what a convocation is to people who've never heard the word before or experienced a meeting like this. Well, convocation literally means the feast of the Lord. It's a time of celebration. It's a time when all of the Mount Calvary Holy Churches, their leaderships and congregates gather in one place at one time and they celebrate the goodness of the Lord for the past year. So it's actually a coming together once a year where we celebrate how good God has been to us. It's also come from the various feasts in the Bible, the Feast of Jubilee, the Passion Feast and so forth. But this is the Feast of Fellowship where we come together after working for the Lord in a year's time. We come together for workshops, seminars, and mainly to enjoy the presence of the Lord through great singing and great preaching and revelation from the Lord, which is really inspiration to go on to work for the Lord for another year. And I also think that as convocations form themselves, they form themselves generally around a theme. And so as we look at, at our convocation that's coming up, and what the Lord, we, what we sense the Lord is going to do for us as it relates to our convocation, we also have a theme which also leads itself or lends itself to empowerment. So as we come together after a year of being apart as an organization, then we come together also to be empowered, to be encouraged, and then to seek God with a vision that coincides with the vision of our presiding bishop. Excellent. So let's start with Tuesday, co-pastor. It's Women's Day, right? You better believe it is. <laughs> Tell us who's on the lineup for Women's Day and what can the ladies expect? I'll be delighted. You know, our day starts early in the morning with the continental breakfast. Then we go into prayer to begin to uh, bring our prayers and our thoughts together so that we can hear the Lord clearly through everything we're saying and doing. After our prayer, then we're going into a general session I'll be the opening speaker for that general se session, and I'm dealing with expectations, how to expect, what we expect, as it relates to the 21st century and female leadership. 
So we're going to go a little, do a little bit about that, how we grow, what has been some changes, what, what laws do we need to look at secular that's also going to affect us in our sacred worship. We're going to do that. Then we have workshops, all kind of wonderful workshops that will be a blessing to the ladies that come. We're dealing with subjects that are just off the chain. I'm not going to tell you that way. We'll entice you to come and spend the whole day with us. Then as we end our day, we're doing what we call the power word. And we've invited four speakers from various parts of our organization, very various parts of the country, to come together and to speak to us. We call it power word. So it's a hit it, get with it, hear God, and go on. That night uh, for our evening services, we've invited uh, from the same clock sisters, Twinkie Clock. Got it? Twinkie Clock, guys, is going to be with us. She's going to work with our women's choir, which is already off the chain. So we're just expecting an explosion as it comes to our music on Tuesday night. And our speaker is that renowned son, Sandra Riley. She's coming to speak to us. And we started something this year that we have never had in our, convers in our convocations before. And that is around 12 midnight, we're having what we've entitled a prophetic encounter. So we have Prophetess Glenn coming all the way from South Carolina, that kind, that area. She's coming to lead us and to encourage us and to let us hear on a prophetical wise what the Lord is saying to us. And so when we invite you to come for the women's <laughs> service and the women's day, we also invite you to stay over and hear the prophetic voice of the Lord. I don't know how many convocations or organizations or denominations place that in place, that the leadership, that those who come from many, many distances, many countries and states to be with us, will actually be uh, gathered together to hear this prophetic voice from God. So we're real excited about that as well. So that's Tuesday. Come on, come on, be with us. Oh, 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 oh the fellows are invited too. I was just about to ask, y'all have all this stuff going on. Can we please come and participate? Yeah, the fellows are invited too. So we look forward to you. All of our leadership will be there. Our bishops, our pastors. So though the women are kind of lack of a better word in charge, the bishop has allowed us the privilege to take that day and to really open up the meeting. So Tuesday night is the opening of the meeting. The actual convocation begins on Wednesday. So we're excited about that opportunity and privilege to do that. And ladies, we're wearing white. If you want to wear white, please join us with that. If not, just come as you are. Trust me, you're going to be blessed. Thank you so much, Bishop. Let's look to Wednesday. Wednesday, as Co-Pastor just said, is the official opening of Convocation. And we start with the Morning Glory service, correct? Yeah, we start with Morning Glory. And one of my favorite preachers, Dr. Carolyn Showell from Baltimore, Maryland, will open up. That's the official opening of the Convocation. And uh, Dr. Carolyn Showell will be our speaker. She's always a blessing. And then Wednesday night, Pastor Jamal Bryant who the Lord has given another anointing upon his life. He will be preaching on Wednesday night. And then on Thursday morning, my friend and my little brother, Pastor John K. Jenkins of First Baptist Church of Glen Arden, Maryland, will open up the morning glory session at 10 o'clock. Uh, and then that night, Pastor Marvin Sapp, Dr. Marvin Sapp, will be preaching on Wednesday night. I'm sorry, on Thursday night. Just hold it a minute. I'm getting my dates mixed up. That's okay. Jamal, but I, I know I'm, I'm so concerned about Copas's earplug falling out. You got to stick it way in there. Um, <laughs> um, um, so Wednesday morning, Carla Showell opens up. Wednesday night, Pastor Jamal Bryant. Thursday morning, Pastor John K. Jenkins. And then Thursday night will be the great man of God, Dr. Marvin Sapp, with his singing, preaching, and testimony. Then Friday morning, the dynamic co-pastor Susie Carl Thomas Owens, my wife of 40, 41 years, will be preaching Friday morning, and then I'll be closing out on Friday night. And we just expect a wonderful, wonderful blessing. And uh, we just know God's going to bless us. Thursday is designated as Men's Day. During the day, there will be special sessions guaranteed to bless the men of God. And then, of course, where, where we had uh, a Twinkie Clock for Tuesday night to open, on Wednesday night, we have uh, Tasha Cobbs. And then on Thursday night, 
We have Keith Wonderboy Johnson. And then Friday night, one of my favorites, Pastor Beverly Crawford. So, that, you know, this is a pre-anniversary where we're excited. We're looking forward to our 85th year. But this 84th year is, is a pre-celebration. And we have invited some of the best psalmists and best preachers in the whole world to share with us. So I'm very excited about our 84th international convocation. I, I believe this is going to be our greatest one. I, I believe it with you as well, Bishop. And for everyone watching, remember, we're talking about the 84th International Holy Convocation of the Mount Calvary Holy Church of America Incorporated, July 23rd through the 26th. It's not too late to register. Make sure you visit mchca.org for more information so that you can register and be a delegate and come and celebrate with us all week long. I want to let you know, too, we did not mention the theme of convocation, which is expecting something great. And just based off of the, the lineup alone, we can expect something great. And that's just in the natural. No telling what we're going to experience in the spiritual, right? Oh, no telling. I'm looking for a miracle. I expect the impossible. I feel the intangible. I see the invisible. The sky is the limit. I'm looking for a miracle. <laughs> Go that ahead, is going to happen. I expect the impossible. <laughs> I feel the intangible. Oh, yes. I see the invisible. <laughs> so th that's just the beginning. It's going to be a great week. Excellent, excellent. Folks, if you're interested in coming, remember also the Fairfield Inn and Suites um, on New York Avenue has special group rates for convocation in addition to the Holiday Inn and Suites on Bladensburg Road in Washington, D.C., both hotels. I wonder, while we're talking about convocation, just a few weeks ago, um, the youth and young adults of the Mount Calvary Holy Church of America um, experienced the Youth and Young Adult Conference entitled Outcry. And joining us on the chat as well is Elder Tejado Hanchel, <laughs> Pastor Tejado Hanchel, um, out of North Carolina. Uh, Pastor Hanchel, welcome to the chat. Glad to be here. Thanks so much for being here. Talk a little bit about the youth and young adult arm of the Mount Calvary Holy Church of America. Well, I think going back to the history of Mount Calvary, Bishop mentioned our great founder, Bishop Broomfield Johnson. Uh, not only was he uh, very interested in the life and empowerment of women, but he also founded Mount Calvary on the principle of raising and training up young leaders. And uh, we've seen that as a rich history throughout our organization, even bearing out with uh, all of the presiding bishops that have succeeded Bishop. Uh, Johnson have been raised up through the church and that's coming up through the youth department uh, we're given our theme was the life of a superhero and we saw so many great things happening uh, in the lives of young people as a result of that convention we saw young people get saved and delivered and set free and there was just such a great outpouring and outcry to the Lord and for his presence and power and we certainly celebrate God for our leaders who grant us the opportunity to have outlets like that for young people to be able to cry out to God and get to know him uh, one of the greatest highlights for me was having a 13 14 year old boy come up to me on the first day of the conference and say, I remember you. You're the guy who baptized me last year. Wow. And so this 13-year-old kid uh, was so indelibly marked through our youth convention and remembered uh, the, the seminal uh, event in his life of being baptized and coming to Christ and, and developing his relationship. And that's what I believe is the legacy of this youth and young adult department. Let's talk about takeaways from Outcry 2013. What were what were some of the the, the, the reports back? The things that the students, the, the, the uh, youth, wanted to take away from that conference leading into Convocation 2013. Well, I think the ultimate one is an experience with God. Uh, we we always set out to not just have a conference, have a meeting, and have fun. All of that, that's a part of what we do. Uh, but the ultimate uh, reason why we have these conferences and why we have a youth and young adult department is to connect young people to God. And uh, we saw that in such a real and mighty way uh, during our last year, this year's conference. And uh, just to see, especially on that last night, there were uh, young people just crying out on the altar and, and just having that, that touch, that experience with God 
Uh, one of the other things we're intentional about doing is allowing young people to showcase their gifts, their talents, their abilities. Uh, we let them do the singing. We let them do uh, 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 showcasing their gifts and talents. And, and that's a part of training the next generation of leaders uh, throughout Mount Calvary. And we are blessed to see that taking place right before our eyes. Absolutely. And, and uh, Pastor Hanson, you actually are one of those examples. I mean, I remember you being the young adult leader when I was when you were at uh, the local church in Washington and you're now pastoring um, at the at the North Carolina church. Uh, Bishop, I want to talk about about actually training leaders. Why is that so important, not just for the secular world, but in the realm of Calvary and the, the church as a whole? Well, you know, we're living in the last and evil days and things are so different in my generation and the generation that followed me than the generation that followed somebody else, because I'm in my late 60s now, the new generation of youth, because of the peer pressure and so much they go through, is in need of even greater leadership. And I believe that leadership is both taught and caught. And I think uh, Pastor Hanschel, who now leads the youth ministry is an example of that. He sat under our ministry for so many years and moved his way all the way up from working with the youth department on the local church to now pastor. And he's an example that not only was he taught, uh, he has an earned PhD degree, but not only that, he followed me, he shadowed me, he took courses from me, he took rebuke from me and, and chastised me. Not at all. Yeah, he took, okay, he took, I mean, it was just wonderful. And he is one of many examples of young men that have succeeded because they took the teaching and they took the love that I had to share and the example. The same with Co-Pastor Susie. She has mentees across the country who followed her leadership example, even as to the role model she set for first ladies, the role model she set for women in ministry and women preachers themselves. So I believe there's a great need for leadership and Mount Calvary Holy Church is built on the foundation of training leaders. Every January, we have what we call an empowerment conference. And during that time, all we do is train leaders in various aspects of being the best leader that they can be. So I'm a, I'm a proponent of education. I'm a proponent of getting a burning along with the learning, and that has to be capitalized through good leadership. Excellent. Thank you so much. Co-Pastor, talk about the importance of of the youth, of, of, of the, uh, the next generation being involved and in not just soccer, not just dance class and, and things of that sort, but talk about the importance of them being involved in church. That's a great, great question. Um, it's very important that they're involved in church. And though, uh, as Bishop has said, the, some of the dynamics have changed because the, the times in which we live. So this generation, they're, they're faced with other kind of problems. My, my take on it is if we can give them core values, if we can set into them some core spiritual value, values, then it, 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 it kind of guides their life and forms the path where they ultimately end in their purpose and destiny that God had already preordained for them. So my, my, my thing is to give them those core values to receive salvation, to, to learn about God, to learn his word, and then apply it in a practical way to those persons to whom they're going to be uh, servant leaders. And so for me, it's core values, loving your neighbor as you love yourself, doing unto others as you would have them doing, do unto you, have Christ as the center of your life, the Bible as your guide, your faith as your teacher, and responding to those kind of doctrinal statements that are across the board, no matter what denomination you belong to or what organization, these are core principle values that keep us. And so if we can instill them in our young people, I think they would have a better chance to succeed in their Christian walk with the Lord. We're not so much worried about their secular life because they have that intact, but their challenge comes in blending both the sacred and the secular and be true to both at the same time. 
Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful words. Thank you, Co-Pastor. Uh, Tejado, speaking of truth and speaking of the times that we're living in, Bishop mentioned that these are the last and evil days. We all It's no secret that Saturday night, late Saturday night, we all received a verdict that you blew the hearts and minds and disappointed so many families. Um, and I'm sure that there are parents watching right now, parents of not just young black girls, but young black boys. As the leader of the youth and young adult department of the Mount Calvary Holy Church of America, talk about uh, talk about how people can move on and take, not move on, but move past the hurt that they experienced as it related to the, the Zimmerman verdict on Saturday night and how people can take action in a, in a good way. Well, certainly, um, I believe this is certainly an important time for our generation, for our country, for around the world. I, I wrote about this in my blog yesterday. Uh, it's on my website, tejadohanshel.com, a blog entitled The Day Justice Died. Uh, because I believe that while Trayvon Martin was killed on February 26, 2012, uh, justice joined him in eternity this past Saturday, July 13th. Uh, when the judge or the coroner uh, pronounced that not guilty verdict from the uh, uh, all female and may basically all white jury. And so you have a lot of people who are grieving publicly. And when anyone that knows anything about grief and about grieving, it happens in stages. And uh, we do have to continue to stand and say it's not okay, that it's not right, uh, that uh, for an unarmed team to be pursued, profiled, and ultimately killed by an armed man uh, and for no, uh, no one to spend a day in prison as a result of that, uh, that's an injustice. And um, uh, we must continue to stand and declare that that's not right. We have to continue to uh, build up our young people and teach them and educate continue to plague our justice system. And because even though justice died in my estimation, uh, we as people of faith know that we believe in the power of the resurrection. And just as Jesus stood in front of that grave of his friend Lazarus and declared, uh, Lazarus come forth, we can declare, Lady Justice, you can come forth. And we can loose justice and let her go. Uh, that happens through advocating, that happens through education, that happens through people standing up and showing that our voice counts. Uh, there's one thing that we did learn through this Trayvon Martin saga uh, is that our voice does count because it took uh, the authorities 45 days to even arrest George Zimmerman. And the arrest only took place because this generation got on social media, got uh, and organized and, and began to cry out for justice. And even though we didn't see the result that I believe uh, was justified in this case, case, it should not hinder the process of us continuing to continue to cry aloud and spare not and lift our voices like trumpets uh, so that justice can roll down like a mighty stream. Thank you, Tejado. Co-Pastor, I want to go to you because I feel that there might be someone asking, I'm, I, just by way of background, I'm actually in a hotel in Orlando now attending the National Conference for the, the Convention of the NAACP, and there are even youth here and their parents here who are asking, what do we even pray? What do we say? And one of your best brands, Co-Pastor, um, as it relates to spiritual brands, is that you are a woman of prayer. What what do you what do you say to people when they ask the question? What do we pray in situations like this? It, it, it's difficult on both ends. It's a sad situation that happened, and um, for me, we have to find a way to move past it, to 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 get to the place where we accept the things that we cannot change, change the things we can, and know the wisdom for the differences. Um, what I would like to see done and what we're going to do in a little while at the end of the summer going into uh, September when most of the young people are going back to school is we're setting in place with some of our police officers a session to have with our youth anywhere from the ages of 14, 15 straight up to college level, they're 25 or whatever. How do you diffuse the situation? What do they do to diffuse the situation if and though he was not a police officer in, 
in name, he certainly was a police officer in thought. And that's where the racial profiling or whatever, it's what he thought. So how do we teach our kids to diffuse the situation when they are when they encounter a law enforcement officer or whatever the case may be, how do they diffuse that so it does not get to the point that it got with Trayvon Mon and, and and George Zimmerman Zimmerman. So we're setting something in place. Our officers are putting the package together so that we can teach them this is what you do. Even if you're right, even if you feel feel that you have been uh, stopped or whatever uh, wrongly diffuse the situation and do those things that ease the tension right there so that we won't ever ever have to go to this kind of pain that I, that, that I know his parents are feeling and a lot of people are feeling across the country. Let's teach the kids, let's teach the young people how to diffuse that so it will not get to that point ever again and we won't have to sit in this situation. So that's my take on it. And, and, and I'm praying that other churches, other organizations will look at this and say, okay, what do we teach the kids? You keep your hands up. You never put your hands down. You keep them where the, the officer can see them, where the law enforcement can see them so that that begins to say to them, you're not going to reach for anything. You don't reach for anything. You don't go to your pocket. You don't go to your side. You don't go get identification. You keep everything calm so you can get into a place to rightfully speak and then let's take it from there again so that it doesn't blow up and it does not end in this kind of travesty. Thank you. Bishop, any thoughts from you? Well, you know, I think the major responsibility that Pastor Hanchel has and the other youth leaders that are on his team is to train up young people because it, they're in their hands. I mean, somebody like co-pastor and myself, because we're in the aging process and we, we pass the youthful stage, we don't even know the songs they're dealing with. We don't we can't even identify with the tremendous peer pressure they're under. But somebody like uh, Dr. Hanchel and other youth leaders, they have a tremendous responsibility, as co-pastor said earlier, <laughs> in putting the spiritual principles there because they already have the secular. Now, you know, I'm old school, I'm old fashioned, but principles like prayer and calling on the name of the Lord and being in the word of God and the secular being in the right place at the right time not staying out all night, you know, just, just doing things that old school people like we are grew up doing because there were principles established and rules established. And we just, we must still tell our young people this. We have to put it out so they would not have an excuse. Well, I didn't know, you didn't tell me. Racism and racial profiling is very much alive in this world and just like the enemy will always be racial profiling in my opinion will always be so we have to learn how to handle our business right as black people because there is much hatred towards that we understand that even through our president Absolutely. being elected the first and second time. So racism and profiling is not going anyplace. And I think what Copas is, is saying, we must know how to both secondly handle ourselves and spiritually handle ourselves. You know, our, our love reaches out to Trayvon's father and mother. We know they must be hurting. I have uh, six grandsons now, and I can imagine how they're hurting. So in that regard, we can pray for them that the Lord will heal their pain. On the other regard, we can pray that somehow, some way, justice will be done. It may not be done right away, but there's a God that's looking down, and justice always wins. And my members at Calvary Local know that m one of my many mottos is, that God is always on the side of those who are right. There was another major, major uh, uh, tragedy some years ago that caught everybody's attention. And although there was a not guilty verdict, well, I won't go any further in that because if you have any sense, you know who I'm talking about. So justice wins out when God is on your side. And uh, that, that's how I feel about that. So I, I applaud Hancho. This is one of our greatest youth conferences 
there. I applaud him. The young people have their own convention and so forth. And I'm sure somebody during next week's convocation will address something in a sermon or, or so forth. And I, I just want to get back to that part. Um, it's going to be a great convocation. We're chatting tonight. And before we close out, I don't know how much more time we have, but please call me on tomorrow on my phone at the church. Ask for Bishop Owens and let me know how we're doing tonight. Don't, don't, you don't have to say how we look, but just <laughs> tell us how we sound and, and, and good. Cause you know, I like this. I, I may, I may go on television. You know, we may do a husband and wife team on television. This is new for us. I like it. I, I you know, the chat, the other chat was, um, what do you call that? We were just talking. The text chat. It was a text yeah, chat. Yeah, yeah. I, I enjoyed that because we got so many responses. And we have, I'm looking at the screen now, we have over 100 plus. And let me see what that says. Yeah, we got over 100 <laughs> plus persons who, who are looking at us now. So tell me if I should go on TV. Just, just tell me if we should do a husband and wife <laughs> team on TV. And if enough of you tell us, we will have our talk show put in a little preaching on the side, come back and talk and have our guests and so forth. So call the office tomorrow or either you may email me tomorrow and, um, you know, let us know how we look. Now, I'm, I'm pushing convocation. Pre, absolutely, absolutely. Pre-celebration. Pre pre it's pre-anniversary. Pre-anniversary. And, and um, what's the theme again? I can't remember. What's expecting the something great. We are expecting something great and next speak, week. From yes. the beginning to the end, That's we right. are expecting something great. And speaking of expecting something great, I want to invite everyone who is watching all of you right now, go to your email and go to your inbox and click on compose a message and send a question to Bishop and co-pastor tonight. We're going to start asking audience questions. We're getting a few in the hopper now. Send an email to mchcainc, that's mchcainc at gmail.com. And we will make sure that we get your questions up on the air. I want to make I want to start with a couple questions that we have in the hopper right now, Bishop and Co-Pastor. And it comes from 11-year-old Solomon Grayson. Solomon Grayson simply wants to know, what is your favorite part of convocation? And he cannot wait both. Well, you know, I know Solomon Grayson. He's the, the oldest son of our pastor in Columbus, Ohio the graces in Ohio. And I believe my greatest part of convocation is hearing the word. Because, you know, I'm, I'm a pastor preacher. I love the word. I love great preaching. That's why we try to invite the best in the country. My favorite part, Solomon, is the preaching of the gospel. Now, co-pastor may have her own favorite part, but mine is hearing the word of the Lord. Co-pastor, what's yours? Thanks, Solomon, for asking the question and, and chatting in with us on tonight. My favorite part of the convocation is watching the expression of the people and seeing the people be really, really blessed. I, I enjoy that. I, I To come together, to spend their money, to go to the hotel and all of that, but to watch them literally be so blessed by the word, by the singing, is just a tremendous uh, thing for me. I enjoy that. I enjoy that. And I know that when we put those right components there, we set our service up. We set the atmosphere up and the environment up for people to be blessed. So that's the greatest thing for me. And thanks again, Solomon. Thank you, Solomon. Again, we're taking questions. You can email them to mchcainc at gmail.com. I want to go to a question now from Stephanie. Stephanie says, good evening, Bishop. You are looking well, and I'm glad you are doing well since the heart attack. Thank you. Are there any plans or initiatives for the Mount Calvary Organization for health awareness, particularly uh, heart disease in the African-American community? Well, you know, my, my heart attack just taught me so many things about, you know, I've been a diabetic since 1992. So my heart attack was a result of a, one of my arteries was clogged. It was 80% clogged. And that came from... Um, the diabetes, history of diabetes, cholesterol not being intact, and of course, stress plays a part in it. So I've ch it's changed my life completely, completely. And um, yes, there is, I don't know about this convocation, 
how much emphasis will be on it. The, the women usually have something dealing with health issues. I don't know about this year, but all the Mount Calvary churches were affected by my heart attack. And it made everybody more aware of what to do. I thank God for my exercise program. My cardiologist has released me until November. So I feel good between my, my doctors at the hospital and Dr. Susie and my daughter, Dr. Crystal. They helped me recuperate and survive. And I'm doing wonderful. But it's always taught me, it has taught me to be more conscientious about my health, my diet, what I eat, my exercise, and so forth. So I learned greatly from it. And, and what I tell people now, don't wait until you have a heart attack or threatened by a heart attack. Begin before you have any signs of anything, eating properly, those vegetables and so forth. Eat properly, minimize your red meat intake and so forth. And please, especially men, Get your regular checkup. Please do that. And I think um, that's a great question. I think that as African Americans, we have to follow through not only with heart, but those other things that are pertinent in our culture and community that other cultures and communities may not be affected by. So it's not only our heart, it's our, it's our blood sugar level, it's high blood pressure, it's breast cancer, it's cancer in our body. And so I think we need to just be be more conscious of everything that we're doing so that we can produce healthy uh, healthy bodies. And some of it is generational, some of it is in the DNA, but even in there, as we look uh, to do better things and to eat better, to exercise, those things. So I think it's across the board. The heart is just one issue, but our culture is, is flooded with improper diets, improper food, improper exercises. So I think if we're going to be a healthy people, uh, spiritually, we also ought to look at that on the natural side and put as much emphasis on the healthy part of us naturally as we do the healthy part of us spiritually. And you know what else I learned? I learned that it's not what you eat, it's how much of what you, you eat. eat. You eat. It's, yes. it's being portion. You can almost eat anything, but it's how much you eat. My cardiologist said every 30 days you can have a steak. I said, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> you know? And I can have a cup of this and a cup of that. It's just moderation. And I feel good. I don't do desserts like I used to. And it's, it's all in the retraining of your body. You understand what I'm saying? So Absolutely. thank you for that. Thank you for that question. Uh, I feel good. And you, you feel good, and you, both of you look very, very well. I well, thank to, you. Even on TV, even on the screen? E even on the screen. You both yeah, my you glasses great. keep slipping. I, I got to adjust them. I, they keep slipping because I'm a little, you know, it's hot in here, and they slip, slide down on my nose. So that's why I, if you call tomorrow, I, I'm telling you ahead of time, that's why I kept, keep adjusting my glasses, okay? <laughs> That is, funny. that is her funny. Her earpiece keeps coming out. It keeps coming out. It's just like the bishop earlier. It's all this Beyonce hair I got. <laughs> that's, right. that's, exactly, that's exactly what it is. Oh, well, I didn't want to say that. Don't worry, I'm not going to change my hairstyle. I'll just work with these earplugs. Work with what you got. Exactly. Right, cool. Work with what you got. I got to so, do it. I want to go to a video from one of our um, one of our psalmists coming. She will be with us on Wednesday night. Psalmist Tasha Cobbs sent right. a video greeting. Um, can we go ahead and play the video greeting from Tasha? Hey, Mount Calvary Holy Church. This is Tasha Cobbs, and as you can see, I am stuck in traffic in Atlanta on my way to church. But on July twenty fourth. Wednesday, I will not be stuck in Atlanta because I'm going to be in D.C. with Bishop and Co-Pastor Owens at the International Holy Convocation. I'm so excited. I can't wait to see you there. Y'all, bring your worship because God is going to meet us there. So excited to see you. I'll see you soon. Bye. Did I break every chain? Break every chain. Break every chain. That's right. Break every chain. We expect something. She got to sing that song. Chains are falling off. You Put know, sometimes. Yeah, Larry, sometimes artists come on 
and they you invite them. They want to do their new material, which we don't mind. But she better break every chain. Yes. There's an army rising up. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So that means everybody go to Twitter and Facebook right now and make sure you send Tasha Cobbs a message that a special request has come from the presiding prelate to sing Break Every Chain. Break every but chain. you know you know what? You know I'm going to tell her that time I see her. You must <laughs> you sing will. that. Whatever new material you want to do, fine. But you got to sing. We need to break some chains in here. I know you will. And if anybody did not, uh, was unable to see the video greeting from Tasha Cobbs, we're actually going to tweet that out right now. We're going to post it on the Facebook page, on Bishop's Facebook page and on the Mount Calvary Facebook page. So go to those respective locations, whatever network you're on, and you can watch the video greeting from Tasha Cobbs. And I want to go to another question. This comes from uh, Terrell Elan, blessing Bishop and co-pastor from the Big Apple. You two look great. Sorry I won't be able to attend convocation this year, but pray for us in New York as we start our campaign season this week. Are we going to have any more churches in the greater New York City area anytime soon? We're believing the Lord for that, but it's good to hear from you. Um, you were great help when you were in Calvary. My wife used you several times to to build the, the tabernacle and with your knowledge of the Hebrew language and speak of the Hebrew language language. We have not forgotten you. You just chose to go to the big apple, but we're happy for you. And we, we're praying that God will open a couple of doors in New York, especially because I love New York. And uh, I would love to have another excuse to go to New York. We had our, another Mount Calvary Holy Church. But Terrell, you, you already know, we have several churches in New York that the Lord has blessed us with, but we can always use one more. I'm out for expanding Mount Calvary, doing my legacy so I can pass these churches on to others. Right now, the Lord has blessed us with close to 100 churches where we include our overseas works. So I'm always excited about expanding and being able to mentor and cover. I believe that every pastor needs a covering. Every pastor needs somebody that he or she is accountable to. And I'm always excited when new churches want to become a part of Mount Calvary. Now, that invitation for new churches joining Calvary Bishop is not an invitation for people to go start random churches right now, right? No, it's not. A, do it. uh, no, it's not doing that. They need to call me first. Exactly. Exactly. Get some advice from me first. I'm, I'm sure somebody is out there like Bishop. I'm called. I'm about to pass. I want to start a church. Thank you for that, because I believe every word you say. <laughs> Let's. I want to go to a question from Sherry Tejado. This is for you. Will there be children's church during convocation, or should we bring our children to the convocation evening services? Well. They always do, uh, for the little kids, they always do uh, taught care, which is they have spiritual uh, 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 curriculum for kids of, of age appropriateness for those evening services. Uh, but we believe in having the teenagers involved in the, con in the convocation. Uh, the past couple of years, we did the youth convention at the same time as the convocation. So we separated the two out, and we missed out some of that engagement with the youth and the uh, the general convocation. So this year we're going back to having everyone together. So we look forward to having the youth, the teenagers, the young adults uh, uh, actively involved in the convocation this year. Yeah, and Pastor Hanchel, um, I think it's so exciting. My five-year-old grandson, Caden Andrew Woodhouse, sings Break Every Chain. <laughs> he, he sings, whenever it comes on the radio, he sings that. So I know that the young people probably five and up would want to come to the services, but we will have Todd Care available free of charge for kids up until elementary school. There will be somebody to take care of them free of charge because we want our young people a part of it. Um, Solomon Grayson, who, who I believe that was the first or second question, he's, he's just a young man. And uh, even the fact that he uh, uh, likes the convocation and wants to know what's my favorite part, I know he has a favorite part. So um, our, our young people are definitely welcome to the service. And yes, we will provide care for the kids. Excellent. We've got a question coming in here from Lady Brooks. She says, Archbishop and First Lady, hello. Will there be any sessions on marriage? Please do a TV show. That's all she wants to know. Will there be any sessions on marriage? And she says, please do a TV show. I have an idea for you all. I'll talk to you all offline for that. But I know you do. I know you do. 
Uh, not doing Women's Day. We're not doing the session for marriages um, on Women's Day. Uh, so I don't think so that that that, that particular component is on this year's conference. In the past, of course, we've done many sessions on marriages and relationships and those uh, uh, those kinds of things. Uh, but it's not on the schedule for this year. We can certainly keep it in mind for our empowerment conference in January and certainly for next year. We are, we are having a women's symposium in May, and that's going to deal with uh, some of the marriage issues that women find themselves in, especially women who are in leadership. That uh, looks like it's going to be being held in Atlanta. More information will be, you can get more information as the convocation goes on this next week. We have more information about that, and certainly we'll tap that issue too. We know that that's a very important issue, and marriages are under attack by the enemy, so anything that we can say or do, show you or help you in any form or matter, whether that's a workshop, seminar, or a one-on-one -on -one conversation, we need, we know that that is a needed, and so thanks again. But um, not this complication; it's not being offered on Women's Day. Excellent. And just and, and just for um, way of information, everyone, Copas, you have something else to say? I'm sorry. No, she was I'm fine. Yeah, okay. I'm fine with that. Um, just by way of information, everybody, for convocation, since all of your questions are coming in, I want to remind you that we will be streaming convocation. So if you're watching us and you're in, in California and you can't make it to D.C. next week, that's perfectly fine. Make sure you log on every single night and you can go to church with us right there on the Internet. We will be streaming our services. And you can also follow us on Facebook. You can like us on Facebook on the Mount Calvary Holy Church of America page. And you can also follow us on Twitter. Don't forget to follow Bishop and Co-Pastor. We'll be sure to post those links on all of the pages. Yeah, Minister Brown, yeah, Minister Brown, before you do your, your question, I'm excited about the fact that this is the first time we'll be streaming. All, of our, all of our morning and evening sessions will be streaming right from the church. And that's why I am so, so excited. And we'll be streaming and mobile giving those who are so excited about the message or the singing, they'll be able to give mobile singing. So all of these things are things that we are trying to do to make everybody a part of it. So go online and you see that we'll be streaming. You can mobile give and all of that good kind of stuff. Absolutely. And we want to start creating the conversation online now. So starting right now, I want you to take to your social accounts and use the hashtag that I mentioned at the beginning of the, tag, of the, of the chat, pound sign MCHCA 2013. That is our hashtag for convocation this year. Keep using it so that by the time we come to meet in D.C., we will be a trending topic and the entire world online is going to be like, what's MCHCA? And they will know about the Mount Calvary Holy Church of America Incorporated. I want to go to a question here from John Rollins III. John Rollins III says, Blessings to all of you, Bishop and Co-Pastor. What is your prayer and hope for the continued growth of Mount Calvary Incorporated? And John goes on to say that both of you will look great on TV. Oh, thank you very much. Our continued prayer and hope for the future and the continuation of the Mount Calvary Holy Church is that we train up leaders like Dr. Hanchel, Train up young men and young women who can keep the organization alive and growing. I believe that a church without young people being trained is a dead church because it takes youth to keep the church alive and to grow the church. So my prayer is that we will be so influential, co-pastor Susie and I, that we'll be so influential that we're not raising up people to be like us, but we're raising up people to love God, hate what God hates, love what God loves, and be accountable to leadership, get all the education they can, can all they can, both educationally, secularly, and spiritually, so that they can help mature, develop, and grow the organization. It's going to take youth leadership to do that. Absolutely. I agree, absolutely. You know, that is that, and that I think that's the crust of any organization, is that, that you have an, an undercurrent of younger people, undercurrent of youth that are following the organization. And uh, certainly we know that as Bishop and I go on, whatever it is we, uh, the Lord has for us to do, we certainly want to be able to pass the baton. Uh, I was in a meeting this uh, morning and they were saying one of the fallacies and faults of, 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 the, of America, of the United States, 
is that we have not, we, we do well in marathon, but we don't do good in the, the relay races because we are not trained to pass the baton. And so I think that's not a, that's, that's common in the United States. We have not trained, and certainly if we can start that in the church, it will spill over into the secular, that we're training young people, that we're training youth, that we're giving them the opportunity to exercise their gift, to expose their talents, and let them do it to the generation to which they have been called to do it. So they're not going to do it exactly like us. They're not going to see it exactly like us. But if we give them back again those core values of loving God, loving your neighbor, loving yourself, sharing what you have, fasting, praying, being a part of the world you live in, I think we'll be in good hands. So I think that's one of the things that we have going for us in Mount Calvary is that we see that and we understand that and we do put it in, in practical forms of application for the young people. And part of my legacy as the presiding prelate of Mount Calvary, I haven't just started leadership training. You know, I've guided the organization through the years. But part of our legacy will be it's an organization that believes in training. We train to the best of our abilities young persons to succeed in ministry. Secondly, with the Mount Calvary Holy Church, not that we are quote unquote holy in every aspect, but we're striving to be holy. Mount Calvary Holy Church, that is our goal. We're trying to be holy, meaning sanctified not crankified, but separated from a part of what other people are doing. We are step aside. Not that we look down on anybody, but the bottom line, we're striving to be like God. We serve a holy God. We preach from a holy Bible. Someday we hope to go to a holy place. So we're trying to be a holy people. That's Mount Calvary Holy Church. Absolutely. Wonderful, preach, wonderful. Preach. Bishop, exactly. Preach, Bishop, preach. But you just dropped a new word that I'm going to have to look up, or is this one of your words? Clank, clankified. Clankified. <laughs> What's clankified? Something I just made up. <laughs> there's, a, there's a difference in being sanctified and crankified. You know, you know how people are real cranky? Yeah. Yes, for yes. no reason, and, and, and they have a form of godliness but they're really crazy. Yes. So we, we're aiming for people to be sanctified, which means set aside. There's certain things we will not do. We will not touch, taste, or handle certain things. We want to be like God, to be like Jesus, or to be like him. We're not crazy and mixed up and confused. Follow what I'm saying? I follow we're not, every single we're not, word. We're not cranktified. Not cranktified. Hallelujah. <laughs> Take that to Convocation 2013. Hashtag that. MCHCA 2013. We're not cranktified. Let's, let's go to a, a final question before we go to final thoughts because we have time. Um, I want to go to a question from Shanita Birch. She says, hi, Bishop and co-pastor. You guys look great on TV. There's a TV thing again. Yeah. What would you all like for the corporate, MC, the corporate Mount Calvary Church body to be praying for specifically leading up to Convocation? That's a good question. And, and Shanita, listen, my wife and my daughter didn't even know your name, but you have impressed them so just by your spirit. They said she sings in, in the celebration choir. And I said, well, she's the preacher that came to us from New Jersey. So you must find a way to meet Crystal and find a way to meet Copas. We, In fact, it was just yesterday they were asking me what I knew about you. You're wonderful, wonderful, humble, let me do it. Student, you, you're wonderful. Um, what you can be praying about is, number one, God will give us souls. Amen. We want somebody to meet Jesus during this complication. Amen. We want somebody to come saying, what must I do to be saved? Amen. That's first of all. And secondly, we want people to be edified and inspired Absolutely. to go back home and do what the Lord has called them to do. So if you will pray that everybody who attends will be blessed in some way, if you will pray for that, that's the success I'm looking for. Somebody coming to Jesus and somebody being lifted up and inspired to go back home and do a greater work. So that's what you can pray about. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I want to take final thoughts from all of our guests tonight. Tejado, any final, Pastor Hansel, any final thoughts from you? Well, I certainly, I'm just grateful to be uh, on this video chat with such luminaries as my pastors and parents, Bishop Alfred and co-pastor Susie Owens, and I'm uh, grateful to be a part of the Mount Calvary family. I'm a testament, certainly, to their leadership and to 
their development, everything they talked about, about training up leaders and, and pouring into the next generation. Uh, I talked to so many pastors who struggle because they don't have uh, that good leadership. They don't have that fatherly and motherly presence in their lives. And we at Mount Calvary are extremely blessed because we do have leaders who care about the past, their pastors, who care about uh, the flock, who care about the people that they serve and invest in the next generation. And I'm a product of that. And I want to thank publicly Bishop and Co-Pastor Owens for all that they've done in my life and ministry. And, and uh, certainly uh, I'm, the benefit, I'm the beneficiary of their, of their goodness. Good. Well, I'll let Co-Pastor give the final thoughts. I just want to say that with respect to the 84th Convocation, we have about 15 to 20 persons who come from overseas. We have eight coming from London. We have those coming from Barbados, Trinidad, uh, South America. So that's going to be a great delegation. We're praying for their safe travel. They will be tremendously blessed. We have about uh, 15 states now that Mount Calvary is represented in, not just overseas, but in our country. So we pray that they will be mightily blessed and used of the Lord while they're here. Uh, my final you, comment Bishop. as it relates to convocation is that I would, I would like to see a move of God an unusual, miraculous move of God. I think the fact that we're sitting in this prophetical hour at the beginning of the convocation, I think that's going to set the pace for this miraculous move of God. I don't want it to be just another gathering, just another meeting, just a, another, I want, I want something to happen this year that is miraculous, that is supernatural whether it happens to just individuals or us as a corporate body, I want to see the hand of God in an exceptional way as we gather next week to not only be encouraged and inspired, but to know that God is still a miracle working God. And, and Larry, you know, sometimes we can provoke the hand of God. Oh, yes. The lady sitting beside me, put a mic in her hand right. and put that right. mic to her mouth. <laughs> It doesn't matter how you feel. He's yes. still worthy to be praised. You know what I'm talking about. You, you, exactly. you're at Calvary every Sunday. So exactly. We, no we organ, I, no drums needed. She, just she, a microphone all she needs and is a voice. mic in her hand. <laughs> yep, and one right. more thing, just let her do one holler. Yes, oh yes. <laughs> that would do it. There's a little oil in that holler. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's why we're such a good team. Because Absolutely. we, we compliment each other. So, um, Y'all listening, help us get on TV. I like this thing. Help us, help yes. us get on TV. Okay. Everyone, write, 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 go, to, go to NBC's page, go to ABC, CBS's page, <laughs> BET and TV One's page, and tell them that you want to see Bishop Owens and Co-Pastor Susie there Owens you on there television. You, you do it right now. Thank you all so much for tuning in today. Bishop Co-Pastor, thank you for your time. Pastor Hanko, thank you, too, Larry. Thank, thank you. you too. Yes, and remember, everyone, use the hashtag, pound sign, M-C-H-C-A, 2013 to create the conversation for a convocation. We're going to be having a great time next week. We are literally expecting something great for convocation yeah. 2013. Don't forget we are going to be live streaming our services. So if you cannot be there with us, it is okay. Open that laptop up, sit in front of the computer screen, put the whole family in front of it, why don't you? Watch church with us, go to church, get your phone ready to give, and we're going to have a great time. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you all next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>